Let's get started. And I do have a Bible bitch, by the way. Did you catch the uh, porn star story? Hold on a minute. <laughs> this is why we could never podcast, because there's never a break in the news. Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. Trump lawyer arranged for 130000 payment for an adult film star to stay silent about her affair with Donald Trump. Ooh, when was this? Uh, this broke just now. Yeah. Uh, a month before the 2016 election, <laughs> as part of an agreement. It's now in the Wall Street Journal, and the question is, of course, how long has Rupert Murdoch been sitting on this? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, I'm literally just reading the WSJ blurb on Twitter. Um, but so, well, there you, there you go. Hold on a minute. And there's a picture of him so it's, with it's her. Wall, it's Wall Street Journal on Twitter. Uh huh. WSJ. Or if you wait two minutes, it'll be trending on Twitter. Yeah, I know. Because holy fuck, we don't have enough to eat today. Yeah. Seriously, I feel like Mr. Creosote. Mm-hmm. <laughs> from the Monty Python movie when it comes to news. I just, I don't want any more to eat. Yeah, I just right, don't, right. no, just a whiffer, just one porn star. No, just a whiffer, just a whiffer thin porn star. A whiffer thin porn star. All right, does that, bleh. I just, I just can't. But of course there's a porn star out there who uh, jacked him for 130K to stay quiet. Because of course there's going to be more than one porn star out there. Because, of course, there's going to be, you know, on and on and on and on and on. Wow. You know, I, I know we're, this is sort of podcastable, but this does remind me of when the city of Chicago was doing its um, hired truck investigation. The mob, this mobbed up firm that was the city had rented trucks out from and the, the mob was just skimming money like mad off of this. It was a huge scandal. A bunch of people lost their job. I believe it was uh, Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Fitzgerald, Peter Fitzgerald, whatever, uh, the prosecutor at the time who was squeezing them, who was going through each department saying, OK, here's your chance to, to get get right with God. Make sure everything you know about this scandal yep. you tell me about. Yeah. And, and then he finally asked, so is there anything else going on in this department that's illegal that I need to know about? Because if you don't tell me, you're going to jail. And several people in the water department said, well, you know about the heroin ring, right? Yeah, right. And he was like, what? No, yeah, there's there's a people in the department who sell heroin. Yeah, a bunch of folks are running a, a drug ring out of the water department in the city of Chicago. And it was all these ancillary, holy shit, really? Once the vice was applied, once pressure started being applied from all sides, all the shit came out. Yep. And yep. Uh, this, is, this is starting to remind me of that at a thermonuclear level. Mm -hmm. So having preambled our way through this shall we begin the podcast uh, sure this is why we do it friday at three that's right baby that's right i, I say we leave all this right here oh yeah it. no that's fine we're good we're good but and i still I'm do still... have a bible bitch by the way i'm sure you do I'm just... hi hi everybody you can listen to the professional left on itunes stitcher radio or at our website proleftpod.com where you can also contribute to this podcast there's a paypal button at our website or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is our eighth anniversary show on January 12th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live for eight years straight, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. And I'd like to say one of our early sponsors, one of the, the people who really lifted us up, our fake sponsors early uh, early on in the day, right. were the good Lord Splitcha Emergency Farewell Party Planners, has been doing land office business <laughs> on just Steve Bannon's ass. <laughs> just, just all of the Steve Bannon firings alone mm -hmm. have put all of their kids through college. Mm -hmm. uh, although we do expect to see him in the future as sometimes co-host of the Hugh Hewitt Show on MSNBC. Right. Because that's how we roll. That's how this shit rolls. It, it, you, you, it doesn't matter how badly you fuck up. Uh, and we'll get to uh, Judge and Andrew or and, and Andrew Napolitano later. Okay. Um, he was the triggering event mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the Fox of shit. Andrew Napolitano was fired, was suspended from Fox, was given a full Gingrich from Fox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And back in March, I said, okay, everyone set your set your Gingrich clocks. That's right. That's right. Because... It, it doesn't matter how, how big of a fucking liar you are and a fraud you are and a scumbag you are. 
Uh, this was the lie about um, a British intelligence uh, wiretapping the White House on behalf of Barack Obama. This entire conspiracy theory he just fucking made up. And Donald Trump believed him because he saw it on Fox and, he, and, and Donald Trump's a moron. And he ran with it. And they traced it all the way back to, to Napolitano on Fox. And he was suspended because that was a lie. Well, the whole FISA kerfuffle a million years ago, no, it was just yesterday. That's right. It was just yesterday. was caused by Aunt Napolitano going on Fox and repeating the same goddamn lie again. Why would you want to why would you want to re-up FISA for God's sakes? FISA is the thing that got you in trouble before with the wiretapping and the White House and the thing and the that. Because he's back on television. Because it doesn't matter how big of a liar you are. There's always money in the banana shack for people like that. Anyway, I sort of got out of my skis, but oh no, my God. Okay. It's been quite a week. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. and Rachel Maddow was all of us this week when she started her show. I think it was Wednesday. Hey, anything happened today? No, I just kind of showed up and talked to my producer. I'll just come on and talk. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Nothing really happened today. And then, oh my God. So uh, I do have a uh, Bible bitch, if you don't mind starting off with that. Bible bitch. That's not scriptural. I'm delighted. I'm, and the I'm reason I want to do this is in spite of all of the Trump insanity huh? that we have seen on flip-flop tweets and shithole comments, and now, as you said, in the opening of our pre-opening of our show, we now have porn stars. Of course we do. Of course we do. Uh, this... There, There is so much insanity going on, but there are also real policies being made that hurt people. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying this week to break through on this with some people on Twitter, some people who are on our side, uh -huh. uh, or some people who are analyzing, trying to analyze things uh, in a, uh, n I don't want to say nonpartisan, because they are on our side, but trying to analyze things without letting their partisanship get in the way, trying to analyze this upcoming election. And uh, Junior Dude mm -hmm. sent, a, sent us an article. Yes, he did. Uh, he's, he's been interested in sort of letting us know what he's thinking. And, uh, and a tweet, and the tweet was kind of hair on fire and saying, oh my God, oh my God, we can't run on racial uh, or identity politics. We have to run on kitchen table issues. Said Junior Dude. Said, said this tweet that Junior right. Dude sent us. Right. We have to run, and... and I replied to Junior Dude today, and I said, uh, Junior Dude, we can do both. Yes, we can. We can yes, run we can. on the, it's the economy, and it's your family, and it's your health care, and it's what you need to get a stable, secure retirement, and have your children have good schools, et cetera. Uh, we can make all of that part of our plan and not be shithole racist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then as I looked at this article that she's he he had sent uh, and it was about Indiana and how, oh if you don't go after those Indiana white voters who feel abandoned by the National Democratic Organization which yes. first of all no they don't that's no. not in their no that's not um, who they feel abandoned by that's not right? who they feel <laughs> abandoned by right um, if they are okay with comments like shithole if mm -hmm. they are okay with Donald Trump. Uh, saying what I'm thinking, you know, that's that's now the the de rigueur of the day is, well, he's just saying what people are thinking. Uh, you know, he's not saying what people are thinking. He's saying what racists in the Republican base are thinking. And those people are bad people. Right. And uh, if those particular voters are that way, we can't we as a Democratic Party can't help them no. and they can't help us. So stop right. chasing them. Right. May I, may I point out one thing? Mm -hmm. uh, that one of the most well-informed Indiana voters I know is Shakespeare's sister. Yes. We already got her. We got or she her. already has, uh, has us. Or we have each other. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> She's also a, a font of information about why Mike Pence was the worst governor oh, in America. Oh, God, yes. yes. And was going to lose. If he ran again in Indiana, yep. he was going to lose. So I'm sorry, uh, Indiana imaginary white bigots uh, yeah, who got right. interviewed for this article. And, and, and just, you lost political. our vote. Yeah. Politico, right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm real tired of hearing about your... your uh, and Junior Dude and I had a really good conversation about this. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, I said, you mean... When you're talking about culture stuff, you mean civil rights, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you mean gay, your gay friends can't get married because... 
that's a culture issue. No, it's a civil rights issue. Yep. And yep. and would you like to put civil rights up to a vote? And well, no, don't want to do that because that would be no, no, no. Uh, and then and, again, yeah. the perennial question was, okay, if this is a working class issue. And Donald Trump attracted working class voters because of his good stance on working class. How come black working class people and Hispanic working class people and every other working class Female people working except class white people, people yep. Yep. Uh, voted overwhelmingly against him? Are they all just stupid? Yeah. Or do or, or was there something other than economic anxiety yeah. at work that they don't want to talk about? Right. Anyway, I'm sorry I interrupted. Well, no, and, and, and of course, white women went just over the top <clears throat> for Trump, just just slightly. But uh, yeah. No, there's a lot of women who didn't. There's a lot of women, frankly, who weren't registered and stayed home, and that's not going to happen this time. And that's oh. what I'm trying to break through, and I'm I'm finally giving up um, because I think it's better that November be a surprise to a lot yes. of people in terms of <laughs> how many women turn out, how they vote, and why they are now active and that they won't go back to being inactive ever again. And mm -hmm. so I've been upset this week, um, and and today particularly. You've been at, you keep asking me, are you all right? And <laughs> thank you for asking me that. I'm not all right, um, in part because of the the executive order that Trump's done on Medicaid, yep. uh, which, by the way, you know, I, I get upset and I start crying about it, and then I I have to get click in my rational brain and realize Donald Trump in his executive order, first of all, he doesn't know anything about policy and how policy works. Mm -hmm. um, for him to, quote unquote, give royal permission for states to do something and give zero funding and zero direction and zero, yeah. you know, he, there, there's nothing there that actually makes it possible for the states to do what he says they're now, quote unquote, allowed to do. Right. Um, if you're going to put a work requirement on Medicaid, that means you have to have somebody determine whether or not the person's able to work or not, Right. you're giving uh, the um, states zero money, zero additional funds to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you've given them zero standards for doing that. You've given them, you know, and yes, states are going to be able to just willy nilly kick people off if that's their way they're they're republican let's face it government and we know is going what, to go exactly we know which states are going to do that and we know which states are going to do that mm -hmm. um there but there are lawsuits pending on that because the actual medicaid statute stands mm -hmm. and uh we'll see what happens you know donald trump's trying to take over the courts too so that's also putting a knot in my stomach uh but i went and looked for um i wasn't looking for comfort i want to tell you that <laughs> I wasn't looking for comfort, um, but I did find something that uh, made me think and made me um, resolute in continuing to fight this. And I think you got to remember that um, optimism is, as, I, as was written, and I've got it taped on my bulletin board, it was written in a, a magazine a long time ago, you know, optimism is resistance. Mm -hmm. what, what the Trumpians want us liberals to do is be so upset that we give up or that we retreat. And uh, that's not going to happen. So this is from Proverbs, and I'm reading from the message. This is the wise sayings of Solomon, or supposedly attributed to him in the Bible. I'm only going to read a couple of them. They're, they're Proverbs. They just go one after the other. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Ill-gotten gain gets you nowhere. An honest life is immortal. A good and honest life is a blessed memorial. A wicked life leaves a rotten stench. Honesty lives confident and carefree, but shifty, and shifty is capitalized. <laughs> shifty is sure to be exposed. The mouth of a good person is a deep, life-giving well, but the mouth of a wicked is a dark cave of abuse. Mm -hmm. You'll find wisdom on the lips of a person of insight, but the short-sighted needs a slap in the face. Liars secretly hoard hatred. Fools openly spread slander. The blabber of the wicked is worthless. Good people last. They can't be moved. The wicked are here today, gone tomorrow. When the storm is over, there's nothing left of the wicked. Good people, firm on their rock foundation, aren't even phased. Stick to it, folks. <clears throat> uh huh. Uh, and I want I, I 
this this was something that you wanted to be a theme for our um, podcast today, or at least a, a topic of discussion. Um, may I, may I put it, our eighth anniversary show. Our eighth this is our eighth anniversary show. Mm-hmm. Um, at Red Painter One on Twitter, who is a colleague of mine at Crooks and Liars, uh-huh. uh, wrote something that you've also said this week. She uh-huh. said Trump could walk out into the Rose Garden in a white hooded robe, waving a swastika flag, and carrying an Obama doll with a noose around its neck, and the GOP would go. He's misunderstood, but I don't think he's a racist. I don't think that he's not racist. You know, a lot of a lot of people say that. This is how normal people talk. Yep. And I uh, replied to her and I said, or they'll say, well, he's just saying what people, people, uh-huh. people are thinking. A <laughs> war on pronouns continues. Yes, yes, it does. Uh, and it, it really is the case that uh, they don't think we see them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and here's the reason. And I want to get back to, to your proverbs mm-hmm. uh, because I'm, you, you threw the Bible at me. I'm going to throw Shakespeare back at you. <laughs> um, right, I come yeah. to bury Caesar, not to praise him. Mm-hmm. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turned w- interred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The the evil that lives on after them is the stench of their lies. In this case, mm-hmm. the terrible things they do will last. You know, the, the, the shit that Donald Trump is is doing. Just like the shit that George Bush did and the shit that Ronald Reagan did will echo for generations and we will end up having to clean it up. The only way this works, the only way that we win is if we figure out how to make them pay for it yep. this time around. They, they've gone on this carousel three, four times in mm-hmm. my lifetime. Right? Yep. Yep. And every time they fuck up, every time they do this, there are their, their fellow travelers and their collaborators in the media – all join arms, all link arms to prevent them from being held accountable for any of this. Mm-hmm. This is why Rich Lowry's on my television instead of Blue Gal today. <laughs> yeah. This is why Hugh fucking Hewitt has a television show and Shakespeare's yep. sister doesn't. Right. Because these people have access and are given access to the big platforms and the big pictures. And their whole job is to make sure that nobody pays for this crime against democracy and humanity Mm -hmm. other than Donald Trump and five of his friends. Right. That everyone else was just a dupe or a fool or didn't know what was going on or had no idea. Or, you know, I've been, I've been opposed to Donald Trump since 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. Motherfucker. You have, you, you greased the road from, from 1980 to 2015 Mm -hmm. and you profited every goddamn step of the way. And, and every goddamn step of the way, people like us were saying, you are going into a dark place. You're going to take this country into a terrible place. Please, for God's sake, stop doing it. And you laughed at us and you called us traitors. And now we're here and you need to get off the fucking stage. These people need to be gone tomorrow because we can't have this anymore. We can't have open, naked collaborate. I don't care if Bill Crystal's on my side. I don't want Bill Crystal on my fucking side. I want Bill Crystal, if he wants off the sinking ship, he can fucking dog paddle. Mm-hmm. He doesn't get mm-hmm. a lifeboat. None of them get lifeboats this time around. And I realize we're just a little podcast in the middle of the cornfield, but there's a lot of us out there. Yep. And yep. if a lot of us out there, if we simplify our message down to just what I said a few minutes ago, mm-hmm. our war on pronouns. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and let's let's do a shout out to April and her brother who came and had yes. lunch with us this week. And thank yes, you. Indeed. And April was sporting a uh, both sides don't t-shirt from our <laughs> Zazzle store. I just so Zazzle, Zazzle store. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to go to our website and get a both sides don't t-shirt or there's just a whole bunch of stuff over there. Go ahead. Uh, but she was wearing one and we thank you for have, have, buying us lunch for God's sakes. You didn't have to do that. And uh, but but her attitude. Um, we actually went to a restaurant where there is a, uh, the former owner of the restaurant is, uh, an acquaintance of ours, a friendly acquaintance of ours. Mm-hmm. And he talks about his grandkids and he talks about his wife and he talks about bicycling and, and so forth, but he's a Republican yep. and he's now a Republican candidate for state house. Mm-hmm. And uh, April was having none of it. <laughs> of nope. you know, he's nope. just he's a friend of ours, and we don't talk politics with him. And she said, if he has an R after his name, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. He's either he's either uh, you know mentally mm-hmm. damaged in some way, or has an idiot, and and 
doesn't know better, which mm -hmm. there that there's no excuse for a sane adult in the United States to be that way, or he's evil. Right. And those those complicit. are your two those are your two options. Yep. And yep. and she was really she really stuck to that. I was very impressed. She was like, yeah. no, yeah. we I have had it with people with R's after their name. They do not get to do this to our country. And I got to give it to her. You know, yep. at this point, if you're with shithead. If you're yep. with shithole and this shithole administration and you're saying it's, oh, okay, it, you know, well, at least we got the tax cuts. At least we got Gorsuch. Yeah, you stole a seat. So now not only are you with shithole, you're also with theft. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I I uh, had to give it to people. To, there were there were people. Uh, I, I looked a lot on Twitter. I've been digging now into the right wing on Twitter and I, yes. I block a lot of people mm -hmm. and I uh, try not to engage, but occasionally I do engage and I look for bots. By the way, that's now my, one of my new ho hobbies while I'm looking for stories. If, if I see somebody with numbers after their Twitter handle, I do botcheck.me and then I expose them as a bot and block them because when you, Fox News, 40% of the replies on any Fox News story are bot. I'm, yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. We're, we're not dealing with the army you think we're dealing with, folks, if you're on no. Twitter and you're you're feeling overwhelmed. No. Um, and, well, and, and vice versa. <clears throat> the, the confidence that your crazy yeah. Uncle Liberty feels yep. that he is standing with the majority is, yeah. is bolstered by a whole bunch of fake Twitter accounts yep. and fake social media voices right. that are being generated by Russian bots. Right. So just remember that and expose them if you can. But, uh, yeah, I replied to one today who was, who was not a bot, who was saying, you know, we all just need to be bigger than this. No. <laughs> we, we, we need we, to be smaller this, than this. Nobody died because Donald Trump said shithole. Right. It's going to be okay. Right. He's re he is genuinely trying to negotiate for immigration and making uh, illegal immigration uh, more illegal. So, you know, let's just stick to the work at hand and not get involved in all this drama. Right. And I and I pointed out, you know, uh, meanwhile, <laughs> Barack Obama said that a Harvard professor shouldn't be arrested on his own front porch and Fox News pooped their pants. Right. They went apeshit. They went absolutely yep. apeshit. And yep. he had to have a beer summit. Yep. To yeah, apologize. Yep. Yep. For yep. for daring to suggest, and you know, I if I may, one of these th one of the things all these Republicans have in common is they don't want people talking about the past. Right. You right. know, why dwell on these things? And Republicans don't want people to dig up the past for the same reason that John Wayne Gacy didn't want cops to dig up his crawl space. Right. Right. That's where all the fucking bodies are buried. Absolutely. That's where your guilt is buried. And anyone who's helping them pour concrete and put lime around. And pretend it never happened over and over again. No matter how many bodies they shove down there, there's always helpful David Brooks right on hand with a shovel. Say, let's let's not argue about who killed who and who shoved who under the floorboards. Let's move on into the bright future that I imagine is possible, uh, given the imaginary Republican Party that exists only in my head. Those people are the problem. The the shitholes, the the people who are out and proud about it, um, they'll take care of themselves. They'll die off, but they need. The people in the middle, they need the media to cover for them. And gradually, little by little, they're, be, they're, they're losing their friends in the media because their, their, their racism and their contempt for this country is so naked. Um, Lindsey Graham today just you know, hid out in some sauna someplace, I'm imagining, <laughs> um, and, and, and didn't want to talk to nobody. Just give me another goddamn mojito or leave the press alone. And then he came out with some rambling statement about how – I told Donald Trump what I thought and felt, and you know how much I love immigrants, and I I wasn't even there, and oh my God, I've always been dependent on the kindness of strangers, and then he passed out. Um, because it is impossible for Lindsey Graham anymore to walk out in public and not be just egged you know, from all sides about why are you doing this? What, what's wrong with you? Donald Trump signed the MLK um, uh, declaration today. Yep. Surrounded by a, a bunch of compliant African American stooges, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, who and 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 people um, were screaming on Twitter. Uh, I was one of them. Going, look, the most insulting thing you can do to the memory and legacy of Dr. King is is pass up the opportunity to to uh, to talk truth to power when power is literally standing right in front of you. Yep. 
And and what did anybody in the audience have a question about Dr. King and his legacy? No. Every one of them wanted to know, are you a racist? Did you say this? Are you and, and of course Trump being Trump scuttled away like the coward that he is, followed by his entourage of stooges. That's it. That's the Republican Party right there. That little tight little circle surrounding the dear leader is all that's left of the party of Lincoln. Now there are sixty million of them, but the, my personal crazy Uncle Liberty um, doesn't want to talk politics no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know when, right. when every time I snap back, you know they're they're obsessed with Colin Kaepernick. They will talk about Hillary Clinton forever. They want to talk about you know Chicago and gun violence and those people and privileged black people who won't help out the blacks in the in Chicago in the neighborhood. And my response is always, yeah, if I voted for a traitor and was proud of it, I'd try to change the subject too. And the response these days is, well, what choice did we have? Yep, right. What right. choice did we have? And and that's and they're they're already there. It took us six years to get to this place with George W. Bush, to get to the place where they start pretending that that it wasn't their fault, they didn't support him, it wasn't my guy, it wasn't the tweets, I'm an independent, and start gearing up for the great escape, which was the Tea Party. Uh, that's happened in one year. Yep. And right now, right now is the time when they are looking for a way out. And now is the time when we brick up the exits and let them suffocate in the rat's nest with right. their dear leader. Do not let them out. Do not let them escape. Whatever capacity you have, right. whether it's right. spitting at Joe Scarborough's coffee <laughs> or or making sure that Bill Crystal has horrible makeup on MSNBC that well, makes him look just like Just constantly Trump. reminding them that you are a Trump voter. You, you are did a Trump this. voter. You did this. You did this. And, you did this. And there and, is no other name for Republicans than that. That you're, you're a Republican Party. This is the Republican Party. And uh, no, we have to use that word, Republican, over and over and over, uh, forever. That's it. And no pronouns, no third way, no no labels, no independent constitutional conservative, no independent. Nope, you don't get any of that. Unless unless you are fully and totally switching parties. Yeah, repentant and saying, I will never vote for these motherfuckers again, Mm -hmm. then then you you can go and do uh, phone calls and postcards for five years. Repentance, uh... (laughs) atonement, and then you get absolution. But you don't get jumped to the... And you don't get to get jumped from your TV job being a Republican asshole to your TV (laughs) job wondering, oh my God, Brett Stevens today, shocked. He said, I've been a Republican voter my whole life. If in, I woke up this morning and was totally shocked to find the Republican Party is full of Republicans. Yeah, oh yeah. my God. What is my job? Oh, I'm a well-paid editorial writer for the New York Times yeah. hired away from the well-paying job at the Wall Street Journal. But during this entire fucking time, I have never left the tiny little circle that I live in because I had no idea the Republican Party was full of Republicans. And again, th- these are people who are paid staggering amounts of money. To lie to millions of people in the service of covering up the greatest political crime of our lifetimes, which is the Republican Party is now a fully, fully fascist, fully Orwellian death machine. Mm-hmm. And they all want to pretend they had nothing to do with it. It wasn't them. And and no more of this. And uh, real, uh, in terms of the words we haven't used today, Blue Gal. Yeah, I, I've sworn a blue streak. I realize that. You know, this podcast, <laughs> this podcast, eight years ago, we began a proud tradition of making sure that we're not safe for work. And I got to say, if there's one thing we've stuck with for eight long years is making sure this goddamn podcast is not safe for fucking work. Well, if we have time to talk about that for a minute, I did have an exchange with a listener about the swearing, and uh, and I have written a post at my own blog at Blue Gal. Uh, which if you Google Blue Gal, you can just go to it and you can look up the word fuck <laughs> and find this post <laughs> I did many years ago. Uh-huh. Um, the, to- it is, the post is entitled, um, and it's after a um, Ford story called, For- is it For- Ford Maddox Ford? Yeah. Yes. yes. What, what we talk about, what we talk about love. Is that Ford Maddox Ford? No, that, Maddox uh, what Ford, we talk about, that... that's Raymond Carver. Raymond Carver. Okay. God, I, thought, I know I that. Knew, see, you and I both. Right. Okay. We're on this wavelength. Okay. Um, It was what we talk about when we talk about fuck. And it's all about why we use certain swear words and how consciously we do it. It's on purpose, people. Right. Well, 
and and we've had people call us out on some things um, or ask about some things, um, particularly sometimes when Drift Class, when you say, um, and you have it in our notes today, knock the dick out of someone's mouth or uh, collective mouth, yes, collective mouth, or um, I believe I said slap the dick, slap out of the it. dick. Yeah, see, uh, some people take that. Some people have written to us, and and I can go back and find those emails. They actually are actual emails where uh, they see that as sort of violent. Um, statement. And uh, then we also had a uh, listener write us this week about um, you, you, you and I used the word shekels to talk yes. about, you know, how many shekels did you earn or something. And it jumped out at him as a Jewish person that uh, we he wanted to make sure we weren't kind of having some sort of stealth anti-Semitism sneak into our dialogue. And so I've and... swapped, I've changed to Fennigs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I, I pointed out to him, we had a really nice email back and forth time this week about how, uh, you know, I went to Brandeis. There's a lot of Yiddishisms that sort of just I've had in my vocabulary since I went to college. Mm -hmm. um, and there there are some exchanges between fellow students, um, as I'm sure there are with African-American students and so forth, where they will use language with each other mm -hmm. that uh, I'm not allowed to use. Right. And... Absolutely right. <laughs> And that's fine. You know, I get that. Uh, but uh, I was really glad that this person wrote to us. And like you yeah. said, you've changed to Fennigs or you can sure. change to something else. Uh, the point being that we do want to be conscious about right. the language we use. And you have defended yourself in the past with saying, you know, I am a writer and have access to every single word in the English language. In other languages, I'm able to make up words. and It's all mine. It's all yours. It's all yours. And you so do all, all, so all of you. Everyone owns yeah. all the words in the world. Right. And you can use them as long as you use them correctly and accurately. And uh, just just as to, to dovetail onto that, to, the word fuck was a branding, was intentional, very mm -hmm. clearly and intentional, mm -hmm. used by mm -hmm. early bloggers to say we, we are not being allowed inside the conversation. Yep. So we're yep. going to use transgressive language on purpose to be shocking but also to mark ourselves as outsiders. Right, right. And and several blogs did that and said, you know, this is, um, oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of that blog that did that. Our guarantee to you. Do you remember? Nope. Uh, anyway, uh, that, there, there was, there were, there's more than one. There, no, there was more than one that said, you know, when you see a swear word, you know we are not mainstream media, yeah. right? That's the exactly. point. And uh, very interesting how many mainstream media outlets decided yesterday that if Donald Trump was going to say shithole, we were going to say shithole. Well, that's the magic you know? word. That's right. the ma See, I, right. As I said, I've been swearing a blue streak on purpose, mm -hmm. mostly. Uh, but the one word we haven't used today is shithole. So yep. let's talk about that, yep. Yep. shall we? First of all, uh, I assume everyone out there we're recording this on Friday afternoon. Uh, we were going to record it yesterday, but we thought, hey, let's just wait a day. And <laughs> <laughs> so ha, 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 ha. Um, Yes, uh, we're on Friday afternoon, and President Shithole is, has uh, has uh, flipped the table over again because he can't control himself. Um, it is currently raining ambassadors. I believe there have been two ambassadorial resignations so far today. Oh, uh, the the one from Haiti was was fake news. Was not oh, true. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. See, yep. see, this is what we do. We redact our story. <laughs> yeah. And we get things wrong. So it's not but, raining. It's drizzling ambassadors right yeah, now. Yeah. Well, the ambassador to Panama did resign. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Senators Cotton and Purdue, who were in the room, uh, who were not supposed to be in the room, uh, who are right wing nut jobs, who uh, David Brooks once once saw Tom Cotton as the future of the Republican Party back in 2014. People, this is this is how my memory works. Back in 2014, way back then, David Brooks said, don't worry, the age of uh, Sarah Palin is over. You know, it used to be the Republican Party was scary and creepy and nuts, and people viewed it that way. But those days are over. We're entering the new phase, the Tom Cotton phase of the Republican Party. <laughs> so respectable racists are now taking over the party. And now I can go back to sleep uh, and just write columns about both sides forever. But apparently uh, Cotton and Purdue were in there already. Um, and both of them say they don't remember anything. They, they simultaneously don't remember what happened which is fucking amazing. Uh, Lindsey Graham, who again went from being uh, a, an antagonist of Donald Trump, uh, calling him crazy, calling him unfit, to being his best golf buddy over a long weekend, uh, which is remarkable and, sm and smells of, I don't know, extra causal factors, shall I say? <laughs> undocumented features, 
Uh, a soft spot in his carapace that Donald Trump found to put a crowbar and pry him loose. Um, when, as I said at the top of this podcast, went on a long discursive ramble about his heart in America, but never actually got around to confirming or denying what had been said in this small room by this asshole president. The person who did drop a house on Donald Trump was my senator. Right. Your senator, Dick Durbin. Mm -hmm. who went out and stood in front of a camera and used the word shithole. Said, yeah. and, and, and he said it, and he said it repeatedly, and he said these hateful, vile things. Yes, he did. I was there. I saw it. I heard it. It actually happened, and I'm appalled by it, as everyone should be. And now we have reset the conversation once again. We have, we have defined deviancy down to the point where the scuttlefish on the right are now looking, looking for a reason to not remember, not be there, change the subject, change the time, set the hands of the clock back. Hey, let's talk about that shiny thing over there. And everyone else is highly focused on this one, which is one comment, which is a tragedy because so many other horrible things happened this week mm -hmm. that this is the one we're focused on. But this is the one we're focused on because this is the one that really does, in a single sentence, sum up everything that needs to go this is the reason why the Republican Party needs to be bulldozed to the ground mm -hmm. and the earth needs to be salted because it's led from the top by a racist who, who is, as I've said many times before, an emergent property of the Republican Party. Right. He is right. the poison fruit of a poison tree sunk in poison soil that has been watered and cultivated for decades by these Republican assholes. And pushing Republican policies and willing to sign off on Republican policies. And they all and, have to go. They all. And I, I, I want to say, uh, do a shout out too to John Amato, my boss at Kirkland yeah. Myers. Hey, John. He. <laughs> he he made a point of saying, I don't understand why Donald Trump doesn't put the Fox and Friends crotch couch right in the Oval Office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it is a, it is a call and response at policy point. making. You know, just make it – let's just totally make it a reality show, right? He They determine the policy, uh -huh. say it on the air, and then he signs off on it. What? Well, I, I, I literally explained that in those terms to youngest child on the way to school today. Oh, did you really? I said <laughs> – there's a thing called FISA, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. here's what happened. Uh, Donald Trump is a very stupid racist man who gets all of his news from a bunch of morons on a place called Fox. Mm -hmm. And so he turned on the TV yesterday and saw his good friend Napolitano mm -hmm. uh, touting his paranoid conspiracy theory about why blah, 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 blah and why would you ever reauthorize FISA. FISA did, was part of the reason why – they bugged you and why these terrible things happened to you and the British well, secret service stuff actually, in. Actually, I do believe that, that Napolitano and, and Fox and Friends were discussing the controversy. Yes, they were. Trying to give voice to Rand Paul in addition to uh, Republicans that do want FISA. Re and they were sure. reporting the controversy so uh, as they yeah, they're, are they're, wont to do. They're, yeah, the controversy on the right is whether you're going to be, you know, a villainous or cartoonish supervillain. Right, there's right, no, right. there's no good people left on the right. Let's right. let's just start yeah. off there. But yep. what President Stupid heard was his favorite guy, one of his favorite guys, confirm mm -hmm. that he'd been wiretapped, and yeah, that FISA yeah. had something to do with it. So this is the thing that got Napolitano suspended. Too. Yes, we we going suspended. back to that story. And see, I had I have three sources telling me yeah, that right. the British government wiretapped Donald Trump, yeah, which created an international incident. It did. Okay? <laughs> I believe the British response was, are you no, fucking we didn't. kidding yes, me? Yes. Who is this little twat, and why are we listening to anything yes. he has to say? Well, because he has the ear of the President of the United States. That's exactly. why. Exactly. So uh, this is what got him suspended. Of course, as I said at the top of the show, no suspensions are forever on Fox unless you die like Roger Ailes, or they have to spend a, a quarter's worth of profit to buy off the people that you've molested, like Bill O'Reilly, mm -hmm. no, you never, you're never gone forever. There's always a place for you at in the Fox News foxhole. So Donald Trump, being very stupid, hears the word FISA and sees Napolitano say this thing, go, ah, FISA's bad, bad. He gets on Twitter, goes, bad, FISA, FISA, bad. Shouldn't have FISA, FISA, very bad. Hillary Clinton, Russia, uh, Manafort, blah, 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 blah. And then he takes a dump and he goes back to sleep. At which point, <laughs> the entire Republican Party who, remember, are equally evil, but in a And by the way, who are voting on this that very morning. Literally at that time. Right. Uh, suddenly, the, the, whatever the 
uh, the, I guess the Joker signal because they don't have a bat signal. <laughs> There's nobody good over there. The Joker signal goes up and goes, holy shit, crazy, crazy Uncle Liberty. President Stupid's awake and he's saying crazy shit. And the base is like riled up and they're talking about how Fize is evil. So suddenly – uh, somebody, I assume, blows in a call to Fox and, and, te- uh, and says, "Someone, no, uh, actually, Paul Ryan blew in a call to Trump." Yeah, yeah. And well, said, no. "Mr. President, we're voting on this this morning, Please and don't. you want this because this is the Republican Party talking." Uh, and and I, I guess they did. Must have blown in a call to Fox, also, like you said. Well, because I think I think I'm just speculating now. I don't know this for a fact. Yeah. I think Paul Ryan blew in a call to the White House yep. and said, "This is." Paul Ryan, and they hung up on him. <laughs> then he said, "No, this is Stormy Daniels, uh, Donald Trump's porn friend," and they put him right through. Right. And that was really mad because right. it wasn't Stormy Daniels, and he was ready for some hot phone sex with his porn friend. <laughs> that apparently never happened. Right. Uh, but at the same time, one some scuttlefish who who has uh, no soul and therefore works for Paul Ryan got through to the Fox crotch couch. Right. To say, for God's sake, quit saying crazy shit about FISA. You're yeah, fucking exactly. it all up. Right. And then they said, oh, well, you know, FISA's pretty good. And that, at that moment, Donald Trump changed his mind. Exactly. Tweeted, exactly. Well, I meant to say, but, but of course, I've thought about it uh, while taking a dump. And I've, That taken, that, that, said, that said, what he said was that said, uh, FISA's good. FISA's good. FISA's <laughs> okay. good. FISA good. Which left <laughs> Sarah Huckleberry to do what yeah. she does every day. Like which duty, was, yep was was to to stomp out on the stage, lie her ass off and get mad at people for pointing out the fact she was lying because she's mm-hmm. a soul dead hillbilly scumbag. Right. Who who took this job. I mean, nobody forced her to take this job. Nobody's forcing her to stay. She goes out every single fucking day and lies her ass off and knows she's lying and smirks about it and rubs people's face in it and stomps off the, the stage and gets a pat on the head from President Stupid on purpose voluntarily. So I have no sympathy for her. I have no, there's no place uh, uh, on the long line of people who are trying to get into heaven for people like that mm-hmm. at all. I have, mm-hmm. No, 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 no. You took the job. You knew what the job was. You do it every day. You do it voluntarily. Yeah, but this, this is um, the peak of her career though, Drift Glass. Oh, sure. This is as, this is as good as she's ever going to get. Yeah. And uh, she, she is not um, Fox News material. Not yet. Because uh, she's not blonde <laughs> and, and she's not going to be uh, Fox. She's not going to. Nobody wants to look at her hoo-ha on the crotch couch. So, yeah. No, this is peak career for her. So if that's what she wants is career, uh, she has nowhere to go. Yeah, but, and but just think I'm about not, that. I'm not appearance shaming her. Having no, no. been appearance shamed this week myself. Uh, I'm saying that she's I'm sure she sees this as the best job she's ever going to get. And that's fine. She she can think that all she wants. But if her if her evangelical Christian upbringing mm-hmm. has led her to a place in her life where her two possible career outcomes are lying on Fox News or lying for President Stupid in service of evil, right? Then something has gone drastically wrong yep. with the right. evangelical Christian Church in this country, and we all know yep. what. That and we is. all know that is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Can Where we do move you want to go from here? Yeah. Why, oh, there's, why don't you, there's, why there's why so start much... reading some of the news stuff because in addition. To, Stuff that's not related to the oh crazy. Well, uh, I think um, I, I I actually quoted Jonathan Chait today because oh, no. Jonathan Chait came to my uh, came, my conclusion uh, actually uh, a day late, but it was appropriately a day late. Uh, his, his article in New York Magazine today was this was a really bad week for David Brooks to decide that Donald Trump had become uh, a normal guy <laughs> because. Uh, David Brooks uh, took to his New York Times column on Tuesday to explain that, you know, really, I'm a never Trumper. I'm the biggest never Trumper you're ever going to meet. But, you know, the people who go into the White House, uh, they see a normal guy. They see a normal, affable guy who's just trying to get – he's got his facts together. He's a little forgetful, but it's not so bad. And David Brooks just began that long, slow, groveling crawl to the unholy middle ground of the Republican Party, which is where he spent his entire career. Mm-hmm. He's, got his, he's got his finger in the air, seeing which way the wind is blowing. He's not sure what's going to happen next. So his job is to make sure everyone knows that there's good people on both sides. And by both sides, he means – the Republicans who now hate Donald Trump and the Republicans who suck up to Donald Trump. Because in his article, there was nobody else. The article never mentioned the word Republican. It never mentioned liberals. It never mentioned Democrats. It only mentioned never Trumpers and people who work for Donald Trump. And what was fascinating was, uh, and just uh, just hilarious 
because I'm past being pissed that David Brooks exists because I'm convinced that the Schultzberg family shits platinum ingots because they, they apparently have an infinite amount of money to keep this shit bag on payroll forever. And that's just a fact of life that I'm going to have to get used to. Yep. But but his um his his reaction to the Michael Wolf book, which was again a thousand years ago, no, it was only three days ago, um, was oh my god. Uh, it's, it's an interesting book. It's critical. But, you know, this this book would never rise to the very high standards we have here at The New York Times because a lot of the stuff is rumor and it's gossip and it's unsourced. And it, it seems like, you know, it's it's reporting on, on gossip that's too good not to report without, you know, going through the rigorous standards that we at The New York Times have here. And then David Brooks proceeded to impute a whole bunch of opinions to a whole bunch of people who work at the White House and work in the Republican Party without citing a single fucking source. Right, right, right. People, people who work in the White House, I happen to know, believe this. And people who work for Donald Trump, I happen to know, believe that. And people who meet with him believe this other thing. And some people are this and some people are that. And some people are in the middle. And I talk to many young people who believe this thing over here. And I feel, I feel about the Republican Party based on this evidence that blah, blah, blah is true. And it was just an astonishing exercise in sort of self-nullification. Every single thing that you had, uh, you, you dinged. Michael Wolf for doing you did worse. Yeah. <laughs> Cited yeah. nobody. There was no source at all. It was just people you know. And you can trust me because I'm David Brooks and I've never gotten anything wrong. No, David Brooks has gotten everything wrong. Anyone who trusts David Brooks's opinion about anything, and apparently there's only five people and three of them work and three of them are a member of a family that owns the New York Times. Mm -hmm. uh, why anybody would trust his opinion, I don't know. But he just said, you know, Donald Trump had this meeting. It was 55 minutes long. He didn't shit on the desk. He read the little nameplates of everyone around the room so that he didn't see that. <laughs> ah, yes, they all had nameplates. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. He, so he read really good. Uh, yeah, he got all the policy wrong. And he and, and Grandpa kept going from one side of the room to the other going, we'll do a clean DACA. But we won't do a clean DACA. And, and, and Kevin McCarthy had to say, but Grandpa, you don't want a clean DACA. Oh, no, that's right. I don't want a clean DACA. But apparently that was sufficiently uh, good performance for yeah. David Trump to fi oh, for David Trump, for David for Brooks David to finally say – you know, maybe Donald Trump isn't that bad. Uh-huh. Because look um, at all the policies he's getting done for the Republican got, Party. Maybe there's two Republican parties. And there's an invisible Republican Party that only I, David Brooks, can see. Uh-huh. It's busy, busy, busy getting things done. And he decided this would be a great week to do that. This was before, of course, the shithole shit thing. Shithole, yeah. <laughs> the fan. And that was what David Brooks was week was like. Now, he, he's not going to pay a price for it because David Brooks never pays a price for anything. He should. In a sane world, he should, but he's not going to. Um, but this week, if there's a, a sort of a, mo a motif here, uh, just a, 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 uh, for just a few items, I wrote a post called uh, Donald Trump Kantian Hero or ah. Kantian Superman because um, this was the week in which things aren't what they are. <laughs> One after another after another. Carrie, so you're talking Immanuel Kant. Then. I'm talking Immanuel yeah. Kant. Okay. Um, and, and the nominal universe or numeral universe versus the phenomenal universe. Y'all go over and read it. It's adorable. Uh, <laughs> I gave you a free 300 level, level philosophy class for nothing. Um, <laughs> but the point being that uh, the Republican Party has basically slaved themselves to the perceptions and whims of Donald Trump. Uh -huh. They literally cannot perceive anything outside of what Donald Trump says and thinks and believes. Therefore, the no layoffs at Carrier have now uh -huh. become layoffs at Carrier. Uh -huh. And the wall is not really a wall anymore. Unbelievable. And, and the no Medicaid cuts, which Donald Trump said repeatedly on the campaign trail, uh -huh. are now cuts to Medicaid. Right. And they don't notice that any of this is happening because they're they now live fully inside the dear leader's head. Uh huh. So uh -huh. whatever he happens to perceive today as reality is what they perceive as reality, and that's why you can't debate them because yeah. they don't exist on our plane of knowledge and existence anymore, or our plane of fact fact based reality anymore. They and it really is. It really is that pay, that Mexico pays for the wall. Yeah. One is the one where watching people on Twitter who genuinely love Donald Trump and are fully part of cult 45 bend over backwards to redefine the word pay right? and to redefine the word wall yeah. and to redefine listening to Ann Coulter. 
and redefine what the word Mexico means. She, yeah, she, you know, she hasn't changed. No. She hasn't changed her tune, and she freaked out over this DACA, over DACA. She's freaked out over the wall. She freaked out over Mexico paying for it. And, uh, well, you know, uh, there's all kinds of ways that Mexico can pay for it, and we'll make them pay for it. And and it's it is really uh, kind of kind of crazy making if you take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't let them forget ever. Yeah. That this is what they did. Uh, well, and it's it's you know, easy. It's just, just put it. Mm-hmm. I'm just make a condition. If if you really want to be like a bend over backwards Democrat, and I don't want any more bend over backwards Democrats, but it could be the simplest thing in the world. Say, look, mm-hmm. sure, um, we will pay for the wall. All you have to do, Donald Trump, is sign a legally bonding agreement guaranteeing that Mexico will pay for this wall. Um, and if they don't, it comes out of your treasury. You personally will pay for this. Whatever, however many billions it costs, you personally, your organization, the Trump organization, will will uh, refund the cost of this wall to the American taxpayer. Mm-hmm. Or alternately, you can spell out very explicitly exactly how you – the master deal maker are going to make Mexico pay for anything. If you can't do either of those things, uh, go pound sand up your shithole because we're not we're not going to play. But uh, if you can do those things, great. If you can make Mexico magically bend to your will, when Haiti is now telling you to go fuck yourself, great, mm-hmm. go mm-hmm. for it, man. Uh, but until we see that, we're either going to need um, we're going to need receipts. Yeah, uh, we're going to yeah. need to put a lien on your property. And until you pay back the American taxpayer by whatever means you can get to, maybe you can borrow from your friend Vlad. He seems to be willing to give you a whole bunch of money for stupid ideas. Maybe just launder a bunch more uh, Russian money. You can get it that way. Uh, I don't have a feeling, though, that he's not going to be around much longer. Yeah. Because we're, we're getting to the point where it's getting into the money part of things. Yeah. And yeah. if, if Donald Trump's going to go to jail for anything or resign or flee the country, which I kind of think might happen, mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of mm-hmm. think maybe there's a passport and a sack full of cash waiting for him somewhere mm-hmm. uh, and looking for a country with that extradition, maybe Russia, um, where he could be president in exile. Because <laughs> he, yeah. he was never impeached, right? Yeah, right. He wasn't right. ever kicked out of office. But um, because they're going to they're gonna find out about his money. And yeah. then you're going to have a, a, a combination of uh, the pressure of you know he's a racist now. And by the way, he's a Russian mob stooge. Mm-hmm. And he's a mm-hmm. criminal. He's been a criminal for decades. Um, that's all going to come to bear all at the same time on the Republican Party and on 30 percent of the people in this country. And mm-hmm. how they react is going to be uh, fascinating, some possibly yeah. terrifying, but fa- terrifying. I, and I think that's I think the Republicans are terrified. The pro- Republicans in Congress well, are terrified of they're retiring. They're they're That's they're fleeing. Absolutely. Seventeen <laughs> of them so far. Daryl Issa. Are leaving office. Yeah, Daryl Issa leaving leaving the Congress. Goodbye. Bye, Daryl. Uh, and and for I think you're right. I think it's for their personal and professional safety and the safety of their bank accounts. Mm-hmm. They're taking the money and running because it's gonna be it's gonna be horrible. To, it, it's too horrible to contemplate facing their own voters. Right. Uh, when they betray Donald Trump or when when Donald Trump has to go. And as they and as they yeah. skip merrily out of the party. The Joe Arpaios are trying to get into the party. Oh yeah, and um, and and insisting that that Barack Obama's birth certificate isn't real. Right, Joe Arpaio on the air. The yeah. the uh, the criminal gulag operator from Arizona, uh, who was pardoned. The only pardon I know of that that President Stupid has issued was for his good friend Sheriff <laughs> Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, is running for the Senate in Arizona as a birther. As a birther. Because, you know, play and, the oldies, and lead, man. And leading the race for the Republican nomination in sure. Arizona. Well, where do where do, uh, where do do people retire in this country, honey? Yeah. Florida and Arizona. And so there's a whole bunch of uh, right-wing crackpots who live in Arizona, who love Sheriff Joe. Who I mean, look at the senators. From, look, look at how Arizona's run. I have relatives in Arizona who I love dearly, and this is not good with them, but they're in the minority. Um mm-hmm. And so Sheriff Joe is going to run for the Senate as a birther, or he's sniffing around doing it out there. And now that's all the the bad news. That's all the oh god, oh mm-hmm. god. But a little bit of good news this week. There's this senator named Diane Feinstein. I don't know if you know her or if oh, you yeah. Uh, this is where we get to the language issue that drip class occasionally <laughs> trips over. Um, uh, remember, yeah, I remember <laughs> in, our, in our exciting story last week, there was a guy named Chuck Grassley and and his and his sidekick, the feisty. Lindsey Graham, uh, who wanted to bring Christopher Steele up on charges because uh, it was scary to them 
that it was all about to fall apart. So they need as antibodies in Donald Trump's um, universe, they need to attack anything that attacks Donald Trump to save themselves. Mm -hmm. And so um, the 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 uh, they they went after the guy who actually uh, put together the intelligence and actually took it to the police, because that's what you do. If someone reports a crime, you definitely want to put that person in jail. Uh, and and Chuck Grassley diddled around and twiddled his thumbs and looked into the sky and talked about the transcript. But really, you know, I, you know, I promised I'd give it to you, but I got to clear some stuff up and I got to spell check it. And there's a lot of you know umlauts and commas in there. I'm not sure how that goes and. It's all very complicated. So Diane Feinstein decided to slap Donald Trump's dick right out of their collective mouths. That's what you said. Yes. <laughs> I, I highlighted that in our notes to talk, to say, you know, some people find that kind of language yeah. a little violent. Yes. Class. But that, no, it's it's not. It, the slapping part is not the violent part. I, I can say she gently removed Donald Trump's dick from no, their mouth. No, that doesn't work either. But <laughs> uh, it, the part being that they are incapable of taking nutrition into their political bodies in any way other than feeding off of Donald Trump. Yeah. And this week she decided to, to cut that off mm-hmm. by dropping the transcript out in public yeah. and saying, I fucking dare you to do something about it. And it turns out it is exactly what you think. There, there was the Chuck Grassley side of it were exclusively and solely interested in defaming the people who were trying to warn the government that something very, very bad was happening. Right. And the Feinstein started a side of the uh, argument discussion we're interested in what the hell went on and, and how- actually finding out yeah. yes and oh one side the grassley and, and graham side are the traitors mm-hmm. they're the people who are betraying this country on purpose behind closed doors to cover up the crimes of the guy who has them by the balls and they didn't want that transcript out in the public because it makes them look but it really doesn't matter because look if you're a, if you're a, a lindsey graham voter or chuck grassley voter you're dead to me already you're a lost soul already there's no there's nothing to matter there's no oh gracious me chuck and Lindsay betrayed the country well if you're if you have an r after your name you've already spent most of your adult life betraying this country anyway it doesn't bother right. you you hate this country so it's not going to change any, their minds but it certainly made <laughs> them look foolish in public well and it made them look uh like liars yep. to anyone who to any actual reasonable person who who has watched them and remembers what happened the day before or yes. what happened the weekend before yep. when Lindsey Graham went on Fox news and the other Sunday shows and said, we need an investigation into the investigators. We need an investigation into Christopher Steele, British citizen, right? Who, who uncovered a crime against America and cared about our country enough to say something mm-hmm. to our federal law enforcement. Right. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. And and Lindsey Graham used the cover of an unreleased transcript to say, this transcript says this and we need to investigate it. Mm-hmm. And then when, when Dianne Feinstein had had enough and just released it herself, and it proved that Lindsey Graham and uh, Chuck Grassley were lying, and both of them should resign in shame over right. this now. Yeah. If we had a functional government or even a parliamentary government, <laughs> they would be out. Yeah. They would be resigning. Mm-hmm. They would have resigned this week already. Uh, and they should resign. Sure. I, I, they're, they have lied and participated in a Fox News directed cover up mm-hmm. and distraction from actual uh, an actual investigation going on a, about a crime against the United but States. But that's, their, it's that's their job now. The, their well, job is to generate been their content job for for decades. Yeah, their and job, that's and yeah, their job is you to generate content for Fox News for for Sean Hannity. Yeah, yeah. and and their job is, and Fox News's job is to be a propaganda outlet for the Republican Party and vice versa. I mean, this is this is a circle of life for them, and uh, it's time for us to call that out. Uh, the thing that bothers me, and maybe we'll end on this. The thing that really bothers me, Drift Glass, is that we do have wired into the mentality of practically the entire mainstream media, the both-sider myth. Yes. And Donald Trump is being so project. He's using so much projection uh, and doing so much to um, salt the earth, really, mm-hmm. for the next president that uh, you know, undoing everything Barack Obama did. Well, 
if if the next president needs to go in and fix what Donald Trump broke, mm-hmm. the mainstream media says, say, now see, it's both sides. Donald Trump tried to undo everything Obama did, and now this president's trying to undo everything uh, Donald Trump did. Right. And, it's, and the, that false equivalence is just going to pop right up. Fake news, calling out Fox News, which, you know, Media Matters has done for 25 years, yes. right? Yes, they have. Mm-hmm. And saying, well, you know, fa- here here we go again. Here's another president, a liberal president now saying fake news all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, it's the same thing. Yeah. And you can't you, – and, and I guarantee that's what's going to happen. Well, that's why we need, we need more porn stars – to come out uh, about the relationship, we no, we need dirt on these people because because yeah. literally the only thing that's going to budge any of these clowns from from the mainstream media uh, away from the, they're, they're drooling, they're desperate for the good old days when all they had to do was say why won't Barack Obama lead? Yeah, and dismiss yep. every Republican atrocity as as a, an artifact of both sides. They're mm-hmm. so hungry for mm-hmm. that they will they will mm-hmm. chomp on that in, ha- in a heartbeat. And that's why we – If look, if you're a former Republican looking for a way out, I offer you a seat on my lifeboat under one condition. You give me – you give the press, you give the liberal side of the equation solid, actionable dirt on Chuck Todd. You give yeah. us ways to pressure Joe Scarborough so that he suddenly wants to quit and raise a family. You make it impossible for these people to get on the air and lie because they know that we know all the shit they've done in their lives. Fine. That's fine. I will I will forgive anybody if you provide us with that kind of nuclear material against people who are actively trying to wreck this country. But uh, but um, uh, beside that, no, you get nothing. You get nothing, sir. Nothing. Good day, sir. Good day. Yep. I would like yep. to do a quick news roundup. I just wanted to, on the note that you just left us at, uh, point out someone on Twitter said that they hoped that I, I want to find this tweet. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, let me find it. It's first of all Shakespeare's sister, who I love. Uh-huh. Uh, She's the she, best. <laughs> she tweeted out, "I don't give a single shit about anything Andrew Sullivan had to say yesterday, and I don't give a single shit about anything Andrew Sullivan has to say today." I know. Tune in tomorrow, and I will yeah. continue to not have a single shit about anything Andrew Sullivan has to say. Okay. Uh, and I said, "Ditto Julian Assange." Okay. Um, the the uh. The tweet that that I replied to, and it's totally on topic with what you were saying, Michael Linden, who's a policy guy, said, I really hope the words Medicaid cuts are far more prevalent on the lips of reporters, pundits, and elected officials than the words Stormy Daniels. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. (laughs) And um, I said, I said, using Stormy Daniels to kick this motherfucker and his Medicaid cuts and traitors out of office mm-hmm. because I know how the dumbed down American media works. Yep. Yep. Larry Flint knew. Yeah, Larry Flint exactly. Knew. <laughs> Larry <laughs> Flint knew. Yeah. It, I mean, I'm, I am absolutely down with that. I am. Yeah. I, I'm perfectly OK with it. And I, I'm not OK with outing, for example, a a uh, a gay man or lesbian woman who is not a complete horrifying hypocrite who was who spends their right. entire life no your personal life is your personal life but you're right. coming after my kids man you're right. coming after my family and my kids and you're using every dirty trick in the book to try to fuck this country over and i think it's about goddamn time that we started saying you know what this is a war yeah. and and it's time to to d-day their ass and roll into uh, roll up normandy and mm-hmm. not and do it with mm-hmm. something other than harsh words Come in right. there with some really serious, actionable intelligence that will make them very unhappy to ever have crossed the line with us. Someone needs to re- to release mm-hmm. the uh, the tapes from the from the TV show oh, from yeah. The Apprentice. So, Apprentice, yeah. Of N N word N word N word. And well, you and I had Fox, this. Yeah, yeah. You and I had this discussion yesterday. I mean, you yeah, know, right. We made right. book on what day it would be that Trump would let fly the N word. I bet it was Saturday. <laughs> Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bet it was. I yeah. Mean, I, why not? Why is it be perfect? The symmetry would be perfect. But I believe you took the position that then they would, then there would be impeachment, and then we sort of looked at each other for a minute and said, "No, nah, no, no, they no, wouldn't." We'd find no. a reason. Lindsey Graham would go find, you know, a mojito to live in for a month, and they'd all go into hibernation and take a break, and they they'd cancel their meetings, and they'd go on junkets, and the media would go off and change chase porn stars. But yeah. n- until the whole structure is is, is taken apart, uh, it'll just keep rebuilding itself. It'll just keep regenerating. Um, so a quick travel through the news this week that you might not have caught uh, about them opioids. Remember them? Remember how bad they are? Uh, Donald Trump has not formally proposed any new resources, not one nickel, 
not one spending, not one spending effort to actually tackle the opioid epidemic. He talked about it. And he declared a 90-day public health emergency, which ends on January 23rd, by the way. Mm. So he did nothing. He did exactly what he did with Trump University and Trump Steaks and Trump Wine. Yep. He slapped his name on it, said, look at this great thing, and suckered a bunch of morons into believing he was doing something. Uh, Donald Trump has canceled his trip to London because of the black guy. Yeah. <laughs> because, because Barack Obama... Messed everything up, and now I can't go to London. <laughs> no, it's, it, yeah, I know. It's, and of course, it was Bush that, that yeah. moved the embassy and so forth and so on. And of course, Donald Trump uh, said about the mother of the groom of this royal wedding in May uh-huh. that he would do her after an AIDS test. Yeah. And it was the late mother of the groom at the time that he said that. Uh, so, yeah, this is not. Um, He's not going to be invited, no. and they don't want him there. They don't want him. And, they, want... Uh, they can't afford the, the security it's going to take to deal with the protesters uh, who are going to come out mm-hmm. against him. Mm-hmm. Um, we will be podcasting next Friday, of course, but uh, get ready. Look up on social media where the march is yep. on the 20th or 21st. Go to the march that weekend, folks. Yep. We have to be as big as we were last year mm-hmm. uh, and get that attention. I was planning on having a pussy hat contest this week, but I had a run on my pussy hats from friends of mine who wanted some. So I'm sorry I don't have any more to send out. But if you need one for the march, uh, go on Etsy.com and look them up. There are some people selling pussy hats and sending the proceeds to Planned Parenthood. So Mm -hmm. check that out. Donald Trump directed his scumbag mob lawyers uh, to file lawsuits against Fusion GPS and BuzzFeed over the Steele dossier and said his administration was going to take a strong look at those libel laws, Blue Gal, because you can't. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for Fox News to find out about libel laws. Do they apply to people who call the president of the United States a Kenyan and doesn't have a birth certificate? Uh, Just wondering. Just curious. Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. A panel of federal judges. uh, They went and ruled that North Carolina's congressional map was unconstitutional. Then have to redraw it. Isn't that a shame? Isn't it a shame when judges do the job of judging and tell a bunch of Republicans that you have to redraw your lines because you're a bunch of racists? Well, and particularly when one one Republican said that the purpose of the map was that it is better for people if we elect Republicans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, if you're at the oh. very very top of the party, yeah, using your inside voice on the outside is fine because yeah. nobody cares. But anyone below that, it kind of gets you into trouble because mm-hmm. then you're accountable. The Interior Department, the Republican Trump Interior Department, mm-hmm. uh, decided mm-hmm. Florida didn't have to have uh, drilling on its coasts uh, because it has a Republican governor. Uh, so... and, and because it has Donald Trump has has shore property yeah. in, in a golf course on the shore. And so, so everybody you know, we else... don't want to. Yeah, right. Everybody else gets to have a bunch of oil derricks and oil spills um, in their backyard. But Donald in Trump— In spite of the fact that there are re- other Republican governor, governors like North Carolina that also— and South Carolina that also don't want offshore drilling. Yeah, no. Because uh, it kind of hurts the tourism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. The White House plans to destroy the data, the information from the uh, fake voter fraud commission. Yeah. Rather than turning it over to the Department of Homeland Security. I, I'm guessing because there's a lot of stuff in there for which people would go to jail. I'm just right. speculating, and speculating irresponsibly is what we do here <laughs> for eight straight years on yes. the Special Left Podcast. <laughs> and this is going to come as a shock. Sarah Huckabee Sanders assured everyone that it would all be turned over to the, to the Department of Homeland Security. So I'm sure someone's going to ask her if she was lying, and she's going to look down her nose at them and say, well, I suppose a liberal trash heap like you would say things like that, but uh, we've mm-hmm. already covered this, so fuck you, move on. Because that's the level of quality we can expect from this White House until they're all out on the street. Canada is pretty sure that Trump intends to pull out of NAFTA. Yep. Now, there's a lot that's wrong with NAFTA, but yanking the U.S. out of it just willy-nilly is not the way to fix it. Um, and, of course, Puerto Rico still a disaster. CHIP is still in limbo. And and three other programs. Uh, it was in Governing Magazine, including the community health care, uh, the community health centers. Mm-hmm. Uh, their funding is in limbo also. And apparently their funding is in limbo like every six months. Mm-hmm. So the Republican Party, the Republican Party refuses to give it stable funding and they cannot plan week to week because they provide health care in rural communities and to poor people. And you just can't run a health care center like that. And uh, 
So Republicans are screwing that up on purpose. And, yeah. and DACA, the Dreamers, are still hanging by a thread, and their fate depends on uh, which person on Fox and Friends Donald Trump sees last. Right. Does and – and, and also on uh, him holding them hostage for $18 billion, which will cover a quote-unquote wall for one-third of the border with Mexico. Not counting the rivers, by the way, mm -hmm. and, and those areas where it's impossible to build a wall. Okay, uh, because we're all being held hostage at this point. Yeah. And just remember, history is not going to be kind to these people no. because we're writing the history. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we you are. Know, I think we'll probably be here eight years from now. Oh, I'm, I'm no, sure no we predictions. Are. Knock wood. Still, my heart's still ticking at that point, and we'll we'll go from there. Uh, Drift Glass, I love you. I've loved doing this show. I still love it. Uh, I want to thank all. I want to do a real sh big, loud shout out to everyone who sent eight dollars, <laughs> who never never sent money before. Yeah. Uh, as sort of a hat tip, point at you. Yes, I see you. you what you do is valuable to me. Uh, little note. And when you put the $8 in there, you know, that's like, I see you. I see that $8. I see you're worth a dollar a year and, and, and a wink and a nod. And, you know, we're not putting your name on a mailing list or trying to list build or anything like that. It's just your, you guys are just, especially if you have never given before. Uh, and when I see a brand new name or a brand new area of the country, and I've never seen that before, it just makes me feel good. That, oh, wow. We're, we have listeners there too. Um, Thank you. I also want to thank all the listeners who corrected me. Uh, I want to thank, um, I'll just call her B. Her, she, her nickname is, begins with B. And she pointed out that Wyoming uh, has no uh, blue cities. <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor Wyoming. Yeah, sorry. Um, also, all the people, m multiple people who let me know that Salt Lake City is rockin' blue and has gay yep. rights and homeless, uh, uh, homes for the homeless and uh Real um, social welfare for all people is part of their culture and uh, a gay mayor. So, you know, that's good to know, Salt Lake City. And we had a conversation about this at lunch this week with our listeners um, about whether that is because they are a um, sort of culturally unified community anyway. And there's not a lot of uh, people that you, that the population could point to and say those people uh -huh. <laughs> you know if it's all norwegian right as you, you say right mm -hmm. then uh it's it's far easier to be generous and part of the problem with racism <clears throat> is you don't have to be generous with people that are not in your tribe that is the temptation uh but anyway had a fascinating conversation about that thank you to everyone who pointed that out to me about salt lake city and uh, I think that's it, Drift Glass. We'll run out of time. Well, let's roll then. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Buddy. Buddy was sent to us by Amy, who says Buddy came to live with her about a year after her husband passed, and she feels that Buddy is heaven sent. Our black cats say all of us are heaven sent. Yes. And that is absolutely true. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go postal unions, letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, this week buy two for us, send us $8. <laughs> this is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Hello, gal. The Internet Kitties want to remind everyone to get their pussy hats ready because we march in one week. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Life Podcast is recorded under Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.